these groups as partner if you're Caribbean, Ajo if you're Nigerian, and Susu if you're Ghanaian. 1.8 million people have been impacted so far. They start businesses, save a little each week, and praise Jesus together. Each story a testimony of hope. Faith is awakened. People are overcoming poverty and you can be a part of it. Your £10 a month could start a new self-help group and help it thrive. Will you awaken hope? Start your monthly gift at tearfund.org forward slash awaken or call 0203 906 3906. Thank you. Everybody. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I said, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Abel is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Marvelous is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Abel is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Worthy is the Lord and greatly to be praised. If you've been blessed so far this week, I want you to give your great God a great praise all over this studio, all over at home. Come on, lift your voice, clap your hands. He's worthy to be praised. God is doing some amazing things beyond what we can ask or think. If this is the first time you're tuning in, I want to welcome you to Declaration 2021. Hallelujah. This is a chance for us to change our perspectives, to thank God for the year that he's brought us through, but to get even more excited and expectant for the year that he's going to take us to. Why? Because prayer changes not just some things, but absolutely everything. Prayer gets in the middle of it. Prayer stirs it up. So we're coming to you live tonight from TBN Studios right here in the UK. We've got an outstanding word coming to you from Bishop Wayne Malcolm and some crazy worship coming to you from Samuel Bella. My mentor and friend, Lord Hastings, is going to be leading us in our national prayer focus. And Dr. Ruth Valerio will be leading us in our global prayer focus. The theme for today is business, the economy, and the environment. A very relevant topic, quite a heavy subject for these uncertain times. These times are uncertain. All you have to do is turn on the news. But in spite of what we see on the news, we know that God has plans for this nation. We know that God has plans for this world. And we know that his plans are very good. Now, every single night, we have received some powerful testimonies. God is already doing some amazing things. And so if you've got a testimony or a praise report, I want you to share that right now. Tweet into us, email, uh, email into us. We want to hear from you. Later on, I'm going to be joined by Reverend David Peterson, who's going to be joining me to share some of these amazing testimonies with you. God hears prayer. And we've got a team that is ready, standing by to pray for you and with you. So write into us right now. Write into us today. Write into us tonight. We want to stand with you. We've got a prayer that has come in from Bryce from Burkina Faso. It says, I'm praying to get a scholarship to pursue my master's degree. We know that God doesn't need no money. He can do it all by himself. Let's begin to pray for Bryce right now, who is asking for an opportunity, asking for God to provide, God to make a way for his ability to get a degree and um, get his masters. Let's begin to pray right now. Father, we pray for our brother all the way in Burkina Faso. We know his intentions. We know his dreams. We know in the name of Jesus that he wants to elevate himself academically. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Every single scholarship form that he sends in, every single application that he sends in, every single email that he sends, every single interview that he goes to, we speak favor, we speak blessings, we speak increase. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will do more for him than he can do for him himself. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
We've got another prayer that's coming from Emma, who lives in Essex. She is asking us for, to pray for breakthrough in, fi- in my finances. Um, she's been looking for a job for over a year. Let's begin to pray for Emma right now and everyone that may be looking for a job. Father, we bring Emma towards you. And every single person that has emailed in asking for jobs, there's been loads of emails from people that are looking for jobs, God. We know that you are able. We stand on your promise. We stand on your word. Please, Lord, open up a door even this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my friends, we're going to go into some crazy worship. We're going to go into some crazy times of praise. Uh, And I want you to get off your feet. I want you to text a friend, send a tweet. If you're on Facebook watching this right now, I want you to hit that share button. I want you to get ready for an amazing time of worship because he deserves the praise. But before we even do that, I also want you to just to not be afraid. Get off your feet. Let's give God the glory. Don't be afraid. Get off your feet. Give God the glory. Samuel Bell is going to lead us right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Come on, are you ready to worship him tonight? He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the praise. Father, we exalt your name. Hallelujah. Same way here for you. Let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now, forevermore. Hear our worship, all we can give it to you. Ah, Cause we're here for you. Yeah. So we dance. Yes, God. And we sing. Hallelujah. We worship. Say we're here for you. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. And we declare we're here for you. Oh, 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 oh. Say we're here for you. We're here for you. Your As we shout your praise from our hearts to your ear. Now forevermore. We're here for you. For you say. Hallelujah, we're here for you. Come on, so we dance, we dance. And we sing, we sing. Say we worship Jesus. We worship you are king. You are king. And we're here for you. To the one who is worthy, to say, worthy. our hearts are ready, Lord. For if you. you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. Say, if you don't come, we won't move. Come on, let that be your posture. If you don't come, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's take off. If you don't come, say, say we won't move. We're desperate, Lord. This is our desire, call. Say we won't move. We're desperate, Lord. So we dance and we sing. Yeah. We worship, you are king, and we're here for you. We give everything, everything. say to the one who's worthy, say our hearts are ready. Come on, with one voice we declare it out, say we're here for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we're here for you. We're here for you. Yes, God. And even as we're here, we ask, manifest your glory. Manifest your glory here right now. 
manifest your glory.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is holy. He is high. He is set apart. There is no one like him. What an incredible God we serve. Thank you so much, Samuel, for leading us in that time of worship. He is holy. Yes, he is. Our theme tonight is business, the economy, and the environment. So right now, can we begin to pray for businesses all across the UK? During this lockdown period, things are pretty wobbly. People are really struggling. Let's begin to pray. Let's lift them, all, lift them all up right now in the name of Jesus. Father, great God that you are. You are the king that has a cattle on a thousand hills. They all belong to you. The earth is filled with your glory. The whole earth is yours. You are king of kings and lord of lords. You are El Shaddai and Elohim. You're the most high God. And we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, that you come into every situation and every circumstance of our business owners, our small business owners, those that are, have got entrepreneurial dreams, those that are running local businesses, those that are running local shops, those that are doing the gig economy stuff, those that have got enterprises, those that are trying to make things work and they're not sure how they're going to meet the end of this week. They're not sure how they're going to meet the end of this month. They put their staff on furlough and they're struggling. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that God, God who is big and strong and mighty, flood the situations. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, now I'm going to be joined by Lord Michael Hastings, who's going to be joining us virtually tonight. He's going to be leading us in prayer points as we talk about business, the economy, and the environment in prayer across the UK. Good to have you, sir. Seth, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and bless everyone who's watching and listening, wherever you are. Our theme is business, the economy, the environment. Yeah. And in order for business to thrive, for people's jobs to be secure, we need law and we need lawfulness. And we have to be realistic that yesterday, many of us saw ultimate lawlessness in Washington, D.C. So we want to pray for peace yeah. in their land and in our land. Amen. And we hear, first of all, the psalmist in Psalm 5, verses 4 to 8 says, I know 
that you, God, are never pleased with lawlessness. And evil ones will never be invited as guests in your house. Boasters collapse, unable to survive from scrutiny, for your hatred of evildoers is clear. You will make an end. You will make an end of all those who lie. How you hate their hypocrisy. How you despise those who love violence. Wow, wow, wow. But I know, yes. says the psalmist, you will welcome me welcome. into your house. For I am covered by the covenant of mercy and love. Mm. And we pray for peace. Peace and stability and order. Yes, in the US. Yes, in the UK. And in the countries of the world where violence and disorder destroys jobs yeah. and kills economies and binds people and holds them in fear and in poverty. Lord, expose fraud and fraudsters from presidents to power controllers. Lord, stand as you do by the poor, alongside the vulnerable, by the needy. God has made us all to be workers. That was his design. Creative people, dutiful people. And we find value in work. In the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, work hard, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy, you become a slave. Or Proverbs 21, verse five, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts yeah. lead to poverty. Mm. So we pray, Lord, for our businesses yes. as they plan, yeah, we pray as they think about coming out of lockdown, who they will keep on their books to employ. Lord, we pray for justice, mm. and mercy. We pray for our public institutions, our companies, our businesses, our charities, yes. every organization that makes our civil life hold together. Everywhere that work is offered and work is given, Lord, we ask for more work, more jobs, better opportunities, fair pay, generous pay, kind, just, and committed bosses. It really matters. And as we think about the environment, probably the most complex part of our unresolved world. It's our lazy habits that have got us to where we are. And God reminds us in Psalm 24 that the earth is his. He claims the world, says the Passion Translation. Everything and everyone belongs to him. Yes, thank you, Jesus. He's the one who pushed back the oceans to let the dry ground appear. He's the one planting firm foundations for the earth. God claims all of this as his. Yes, God. So we pray, Lord, teach us to be sensitive and responsible, not indifferent wasters, yeah. not those who throw away and care less yes, thank you, about God. the energy we burn and the environment we abuse. We pray specifically specifically for the COP26 talks in Glasgow in November, that must bring our world to resolution to fight carbon intensity and change climate disorder. Thank you, Jesus. For it disavows the poor, it breaks up communities, it kills off work. Yes, Lord, we pray this. Together we pray, teach us, Lord, to fight indifference. Yes, Lord. And to change our ways. Yes, God. And to keep our world as a good place for you, Lord, yes, Lord. to re-inherit, sustain life. Yes, Jesus. And teach us to sacrifice in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Hastings. God bless you. The week is almost over. Oh. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. on Tear Front's YouTube channel, we will be gathering in prayer, led by Rashad Gibbons and Naomi Sterling. Hallelujah. Amen. And at lunchtime, <laughs> we're going to be gathering right here on Zoom uh, for a midday workshop. We're going to be diving into the subject of youth, and that's going to be led by Mark Antoine and Dot Tyler. And on Instagram tonight, we have Bishop Wayne Malcolm and Chris Gazy. So make sure you are there. In the yes, village. put your hat on, get your tambourine, cool. uh, get your hymn book out. We're going to sing some songs. All right, all right. We're, we're not going that time. far back. Okay, maybe okay, not. Maybe okay, maybe not. Just, too old. Yeah, yeah sorry, too old. Yeah. 2021. Hi. <laughs> Hallelujah. While this week we've had some incredible testimonies um, coming to coming through to us. And right now to, we want to just share some of these testimonies to stir up your faith. And I'm joined by Reverend David Peterson. Good to see you, bro. God bless you. You're Thank looking you good. Me. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. And we're going to share with you some of these amazing praise reports. So, um, Reverend, someone has emailed in saying, thank you for your prayers. Baby Alice is right now at home. Wow. And well. You know, this is why I love God. We serve a miracle working miracle God. Miracle working God. He's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another person has emailed in saying, God has been so faithful. He, has lit he is literally restoring me from the inside out. He is a transforming God. He can change anybody Hallelujah. in any circumstance, yeah, yeah, any yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. He has the power to do all things. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not He's surprised. Amazing. I'm not surprised these testimonies are coming in even before the week ends. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Hallelujah. Um, this one really has blessed me. It says, so thankful to God for healing me and my family from COVID-19. Come on. I'm going to say that again. So thankful to God for healing me and my family Amen. from COVID-19. So thankful for everyone's prayer. Yes, Lord. We yes, serve Lord. a mighty God. He's wonderful. I'm not surprised. Amen. I'm not surprised. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, uh, God inhabits the praises of his people. And we want to just begin to give God a thank you praise and a thank you prayer so that people will know that this is going to happen for them. Amen. Over to you, bro. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we give you praise and worship, we oh thank Lord. you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, yeah, yeah, yeah. for these amazing testimonies. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you release more blessings, Father thank God, you, Father. more testimonies to those who are watching right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I pray, Father God, that tonight, Holy Spirit, you will encourage those, Father God, who are watching right now to be God. unconditional worshippers, Father God. God. To praise you in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, Father God Almighty. To worship you at all times, oh God, because you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on at home. Amen. This is not just something Hallelujah. for you to get, uh, just to watch. We want you to get involved. Send your praise Lord testimonies Jesus. in. Send your praise reports in. Your we want to hear Lord. from you. Thank you so much for joining me, David. God bless, God bless you. you. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Isn't he mighty? Isn't he mighty? Come on, let's clap our hands if you believe he's mighty. Come on at home. Clap your hands if you believe he's mighty. He's a mighty God. Well, now I'm going to be joined virtually again by Dr. Ruth Valerio, who is the Global Head of Advocacy and Influencing at Tear Fund. She's going to be sharing with us prayer points relating to business, the economy and the environment, all packaged for the global world. Good evening, Seth. It's so wonderful to see you. And I'm really sorry that the restrictions mean I can't be with you in person. No I have loved this week praying with you, worshipping with you. It has been so inspiring. So thank you to you and the team for everything that you've done. At Tear Fund, we believe that God's kingdom values call us to work for a world where everyone has what they need and is able to flourish physically, socially, spiritually, psychologically, economically. And we're called to do this within a wider natural world that flourishes too. What Genesis 1.31 describes as God's very good creation. I want you to pray with me this evening because we believe that it's vitally important that our work with churches doesn't just give people a handout, but it gives a hand up 
and enables communities to stand on their own feet and be liberated. So I want to call us to pray this evening for three things. Firstly, for Tear Fund's work around the world, creating work opportunities for people which improve their health and economic situation and take care of the environment. Secondly, for the climate crisis, the biggest challenge of our times, and one that is completely linked with racial justice, as we know it's predominantly black people and people of color who suffer most from climate change. And then thirdly, we're gonna pray for our post-COVID economic recovery, that the billions of pounds that are being spent will be spent in a way that leads to an economy and a society that is socially just and environmentally sustainable. So please, wherever you are, let's pray together. Firstly, for Tear Fund's overseas work. Lord God, we pray for the self-help groups that we've been hearing about this week. We know that for many of them, they're involved in taking care of this earth through tree planting, composting, sustainable farming practices, we pray for the Carla Haywood Church in Ethiopia with the work that they're doing for with 80,000 people learning climate friendly farming techniques. Lord God, we pray for our work in Pakistan, working in the slums there on a waste management project in an area where most waste is burnt or just dumped into the rivers. Lord God, I pray that through this work, people's health will be improved, people's environment will be improved, and that jobs will be created. God, may it go smoothly and may there be good relationships in the communities there. Father, I pray for Nigeria. I pray for the Joss Green Centre, a youth-led initiative that's driving change on environmental issues. God, I pray for your mantle of leadership to be on those young people as they drive change in that crucial country of Nigeria. And I want to echo Lord Hastings' prayers around, around climate and around the, the UN climate talks that we're building up to at the end of this year. We come to you, God, on our knees, recognizing our failure to look after this precious world that you've made. God, we thank you for good, bold, ambitious messages that have been coming out from several big world economies. Lord God, we pray for our leaders. We pray for Prime Minister Boris Johnson. We pray for President-elect Joe Biden. We pray that they would take bold and decisive action. And we pray for Tear Fund's work with churches in the UK in the run-up to these climate talks. May all of us, me included, you watching, may we recognise the importance of this issue and speak up and take action. And finally, God, I pray for the economic recovery that our government is undertaking, that they would take this opportunity to build back a nation and a society that is environmentally sustainable and socially just. Let's stand together, people, and Pray together, God of all creation. Today we pray for a world where extreme poverty, inequality and environmental exploitation are no more. We pray for a world where people and our planet thrive. God, we pray you would send us out, send me out as your global church to love our neighbours and protect the most vulnerable people from climate change. May we be bold and courageous in speaking up for justice. We pray for our leaders and for our governments as they meet in Glasgow later this year, that they will take urgent action Amen. on climate change. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we bring these prayers together Amen. and we pray for justice and renewal in all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Ruth. Now for an amazing word by Bishop Way Malcolm. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Wayne Malcolm, and I am delighted to be part of the Declaration 2021. Woo! 
And I'm going to share a, a thought with us today from the Word of God. I invite you to come with me into the Scriptures, the Acts of the Apostles, the book of Acts, uh, chapter number 3, and we're going to read a few verses. So I want you to come along with me, read with me, and let's get into this story. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. That is, he was asking for some money. And fixing his eyes on him with, jo with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Somebody say, lift him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Praise be to God. I want to speak into uh, our consciousness and into our collective destiny from the subject, the healing of a nation, the healing of a nation. You know, when we look at this uh, paralyzed man, uh, what, what, what we note when we read behind the lines and beneath the lines is that this man was not only physically paralyzed, but he was also psychologically paralyzed. He was psychologically paralyzed because he was not able to envisage a life beyond begging. He was not able to imagine a future that did not involve begging because for all of his life, uh, his family, his friends laid him at the gate of the temple where he would beg for a living. He was completely dependent on the generosity, the benevolence, the kindness of others. And this created uh, a somewhat of a psychological paralysis where, where it's hard to envisage that things will ever be different if they've always been the same way as long as you can remember. He's not only psychologically paralyzed, he is clearly economically paralyzed. Uh, he is unable to generate an income for himself. He is therefore socially paralyzed. He is socially excluded. He is unable to, uh, to, to have a family, to provide for his family, or to do the normal things that normal people want to do. But to cap it all, he is spiritually paralyzed. He's spiritually paralyzed because he's positioned daily at the door of a religious institution. He's positioned daily at the gate of the temple. And when you are a, a lame man at the gate of the temple, you get to hear things and see things that the regular congregants don't. Because people will have conversations over you like you don't even exist. And so uh, he was aware of, the, uh, of some of the anomalies and some of the paradoxes and some of the hypocrisies that, that caused even Jesus to turn over the tables of the money changers. He was able to witness what was really going on behind the religious guise and mask. And this would no doubt have put some, some pressure on his perspective of God and of religion. So this man is in a very difficult position. But today I want you to consider the, the possibility that he represents nations who have been paralyzed, not only economically, but psychologically, who are excluded from the norms of international engagement, and who are spiritually paralyzed as well because of a failure uh, of religion to do what was promised on the tin. Uh, he actually represents uh, a nation. I, I think of him as a nation. And there are some nations that I have been to. And as I've, as, as I've entered those nations, it's become clear to me that there are severe structural, systemic 
disadvantages that the people have inherited and it is all they have ever known. And it's very difficult to imagine a future beyond begging if that's all you've ever done in order to survive. And so sometimes just simply going there and saying there's hope, there's a future, it's treated with such cynicism because what does he know? Who is this guy flying in from his comfort zone to come to tell us that there's a potential future for us? And, and, and so I see the same sort of psychology at work with this man and in the nations of the world. But I've got some good news for the nations. Yeah, I've come, to be, I've come as a bringer of, of, of great tidings. You see, just as the power of God was able to liberate this man from his condition and in an instant break years of psychological, economic, physical, and social disability and empower him to stand on his own two feet, I am convinced that God has scheduled that kind of miracle for some nations in our world today. Can I hear hear an amen from somebody. So here's what I want us to notice is that Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer and they noticed this man and they said to the man, look on us, look at us, which, which suggests he was looking down, that he was in his typical posture. Because when you routinely do something over and over again, the monotony of the routine becomes a form of hypnosis that puts you into a behavioral trance to where all you just do what you've always done. You sit there, you put your hand up, and you put your head down. And so the apostles needed to break his routine, break his pattern, and change their focus. And so this was the first instruction. Stop looking down and start looking up. Now, I'm not just speaking about nations here. I'm speaking about individuals who find themselves literally paralyzed economically psychologically socially unable to get yourself out of that particular routine the starting point is to change your focus and break your pattern because that pattern is 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 a is a trance like behavior where you have come to stop expecting anything to be different so you just behave the same way every day well the apostle said today you're going to do something different you've been looking down for years and years today I want you to look up because as you look up and as you change your focus you're going to see something new so as he looks up the bible says he looked up expecting to receive something from them in other words He's expecting a handout. He's expecting some money. He looks up thinking, you're going to give me some money. And see, your expectation is a very big issue here. Because when you are dependent on the generosity of others when they call you you suspect here's another opportunity for me to get uh you know for me to get something else and this is this is part of the symptom the tragedy of his condition he looks up expecting to receive some more money but on this particular day god did something that would radically transform his life and not only change his life but change the spiritual climate in the whole of Jerusalem give me a minute to explain this from the fireworks and the drama and the theater of Acts chapter 2 the writer zeroes in on one man for an entire chapter to deal with this one man you got to understand chapter 2 is fireworks theater drama 
thousands of people coming to faith, 120 staggering out of the upper room. I mean, it was, it was fireworks. But from those fireworks, the writer moves into this one man's story and devotes an entire chapter to this one man. Why is this one man so important? He's so important because he's the one man that everyone knows. He's the one man that everyone has seen. He's the one man that is not faking his paralysis. He is the one man that we know is lame. And if he gets up and walks, if he stands up, if he can leap and run, then a miracle has happened and there's no denying it. I wish I had some help in here today. There are some people that, that, that when you are liberated, when you break through, when the miracle happens for you, there's no one in your circle that can deny it. It is undeniable. You become the kingpin that knocks down all of the other pins because of you your testimony, the strength of your testimony. And I believe there are nations like that right now that if they can be liberated it's going to change the atmosphere for the entire world. And that's why we are praying for the nations and praying into the nations. But I want to take it now to the place of strategy. Can I have a few more minutes to talk about the strategy? The apostle said, silver and gold have we none. In other words, we don't have what you want, but we do have what you need. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Woo! But it didn't stop there. Because it's got to go beyond words. Woo! Somebody help me preach. It's got to go beyond words. The Bible says he reached down his right hand and took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Everybody say lift him up. You see, we've got to now go beyond the words of liberation. And we've now got to begin to manifest the actions that liberate people in their crisis. And the action is the lifting up. It's the hand up. And there's a big difference between a hand up and a hand out. He wanted a hand out, but God gave him a hand up. I wish I had some help in here today. He looked for a hand out, but God gave him a hand up. Up. There's a difference, and the difference goes like this. If you give a man a fish, you will feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish and give him a boat and a net, you will feed him for life. You see, the hand up, the hand out is, is, is the mango. The hand up is the mango tree. See, if you can plant mango trees... What you've now given me is leverage. Everybody say leverage. You've now given me a tool. You've given me a way to make it myself. And see, what the apostles did not do is go in and, and give him what he wanted. Instead, they released into his life what he needed, which was the empowerment and the ability to stand upon his own two feet. Now, what does this have to do with the healing of nations? Can I testify? for just a moment. I'm going to testify to you about a defining moment, a life-changing moment in my own life. It occurred when I went with Tear Fund to Ethiopia, the great historic country of Ethiopia. And there in Ethiopia, where there is poverty, where there is an, a struggle, where there are these pockets of economic paralysis. Yes, there are cities that are so modern, that are so advanced. There's clearly an economy. But once you go beyond the cities, you start to experience the real pain and misery of lack and of need. And we went right out into those particular areas. And in those areas where there didn't seem to be much to do, much to work with, what we discovered was these little groups. Somebody say groups. 
They're called self-help groups. And these were women who got together in little groups of up to 20 people at a time. And what they would do is they would take whatever money they had, sometimes the equivalent of one pence, and they'd put it into a collective pot. And they would put it into that pot whenever they could. But they didn't just save the money in a collective pot. They also sat to re-educate themselves concerning entrepreneurship, concerning enterprise, concerning trade, concerning marketing, concerning administration. They learned how to become business owners and to become innovators and creators and entrepreneurs. And they held each other accountable. They were like a little circle of accountability and I was watching this with great awe. But my life changed when I was able to witness firsthand what they were able to do with their hand up. Some of them were able to literally build a new home. Woo, somebody help me preach up in here. Some were able to pay for their children's education. Others Others were able to employ their husbands. I even met one who owned shares in a department store, all starting from the little pennies that they were saving together. There is a difference between that kind of liberation and the handout mentality. Because when all you do is handout, that's a survival mechanism. Yes, you will survive on handouts. Certainly, if this man uh, in the Bible didn't have people that would give him handouts he wouldn't have been there in acts chapter 3 to have had the miracle but handouts are a way of surviving never a way of thriving and so uh this this handout mentality uh actually genders or it generates a dependency upon the supremacy of others you you literally go around looking up at others as your savior and as your star but what i saw in ethiopia was a sense of pride a sense of personal achievement a sense that we did this together a sense that nobody put this money in we put our own money in we built our own business and as we built our businesses we were able to build other businesses and until all all of us were doing business. Now, some of the business was chickens. Some was sheep. Some, some was cows. Uh, but it went beyond that. And we saw people building uh, public toilets and building public bathrooms. And they were doing the most innovative things. But there was a confidence that they carried. And a certain, uh, a certain spiritual and good pride that they had with them because of the difference between a hand up and a hand out. Out. And so right now, I want to declare that God is raising up a generation of people who really do care about poverty in the world. But we're caring beyond the rhetoric of words because Peter and John didn't stop with words. And we're caring beyond the usual, here's a hand out for survival. And we're now looking at how we can leverage our collective knowledge and skill sets and tool sets to to help empower other people to do what they can do best, ideally to stand upon their own two feet. And there is nothing more glorious than to witness someone that, that needed your hands suddenly standing on their own two feet like this man. He stood up, the Bible says he leaped, he ran, he made noise, and as a result of his conversion... 5,000 new believers came to Christ with all the fireworks and all of the drama and all of the theatrics of chapter 2. There were 3,000 that said yes. But through one man's transformation, one man's liberation from psychological bondage, economic bondage, emotional bondage, spiritual bondage, one man's transformation led to 5,000 people saying yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the apostles were arrested for the trouble they were causing in Jerusalem, and when there were those in the court that wanted to put them to death, here's what the defense was they said you know what this man who's been healed 
He, this is a notable miracle that has happened in Israel. And we cannot deny it. In other words, we can't kill these people because we can't deny what just happened to that man. I tell you, God's going to do something in your life that not even your enemies will be able to deny it. I want you to throw up your hands and begin to receive it right now. There's a liberation from every form of psychological, economic, social, physical bondage in your life because God wants you to become that testimony, that shining light that gets up, runs, leaps, and praises God when they said it couldn't be done and you can become the catalyst for the healing of a nation. God bless you in Jesus' name. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, what wow. What a powerful word. That was amazing. Incredible. That was amazing. I feel like this is the year to just do it. Amen. Come it's on. It's not to think about it. It's not to ponder. It's not to question. It's just to leap over the hurdle and just do it. Amen. What a word. Faith without works is dead. So it's definitely a time to just make that leap. Mm, of faith absolutely and for people that need to just do it that aren't christians uh there are people that need to just do it that don't know jesus the way that we know jesus and they could be watching right now mm. um and they've got a dream they've got a vision but jesus is the one that is going to take them from good to great definitely i wonder could you just lead that person that's watching right now amen in a prayer amen no to lead them to the cross hallelujah you've seen the anarchy you've seen the rise in the number of people that have contracted the virus, it only makes logical sense to give your heart to God. It only makes logical sense to give your heart to Jesus. If you like to make that leap of faith right now, I'd like you to repeat these words after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus be my king, be my, be my saviour, Savior. Forgive me of all my wrongdoings. Forgive me of all my wrongdoings. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Connect me to my Creator. Connect me to my Creator. So I can call him Abba Father. So I can call him Abba Father. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I can have the gift. So that I can have the gift of everlasting life. Of everlasting. Life. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Amen. You have just made the greatest decision of your life Hallelujah. and I prophesy that your life will never be the same again. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Your latter Amen. shall be greater Amen. in Jesus name. Thank you so much, my bro. And thank you so much at home for joining us today. Remember to tune in same time right here on TBN UK. We're going to be focusing on the topic of youth. So all you young people, if you know a young person, make sure you tune in. Remember to connect with us online. The conversation is going to continue online after this show. And there's loads of stuff for you to get involved with. We're going to continue worshipping here because he deserves it. God bless you. We love you. Good night. God bless you. God's spirit is moving all across Africa. Just ask Marie. After losing her husband, Marie didn't know how she'd feed their five children. 
She began shifting bricks on building sites for money until her hands were raw. But God had a plan for her life. Marie heard about a self-help group at her local church. Around 20 people would come together, pray for one another, save a little each week, and praise Jesus for the fruit. Each story, a testimony of hope that's eternal. Marie saved 20 pence a week and took out a loan for a sewing machine. She started making reusable bags and was able to provide for her children. She's now training others to do the same. Your £10 a month could start a new self-help group and help it thrive. Will you help Awaken Hope? Start your monthly gift at tearfund.org forward slash awaken or call 0203-906-3906. Thank you. has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Even if they're not comfortable, even if they make you sore, even if they take your time, even